I'ma tell you about a woman whose heart is sunshine, whose body burn hot. I'ma tell you about a woman whose cold is tundra, with some frozen eyes. I can tell by the way she moves that she cares and it's lovely too. I'ma tell you about a story of a broken man, how it began, how it ends. But he didn't understand, it's all the love that he had in his hands, yeah Woke up one morning and said, I can't get her out my head Oh, good morning folks Bit of a rush job this morning, so I get into work And I realise I've left my keys here overnight because Stuart locked up Fortunately we had a spare set in the pub So I was able to let myself in and then I realised whilst the HLT had come on last night for the brew day, I forgot to turn the pump on at the same time. Normally the pump comes on with the control panel to heat the HLT. So we've got some thermal separation in the HLT. Five, ten minutes should sort that out. I suppose it's given me enough time really to weigh out the grains this morning. We've got them in the mash tun. I'm also filling the bucket with some fresh persid to recirculate through the heat exchanger and uh, at the moment we've got some old sanitizer in there so I'm just recirculating that to get everything wet and off the walls it is clean and then we'll put the clean persid in here is the grain for today's brew day with a little bit of DWB uh, water treatment in there we've also got some AMS to go in to slightly acidify the water and uh, then once we've got mashed in this morning we're going to empty this tank again I've already started the emptying process as you can see so we've got a nice bit of yeast slurry coming out of the bottom of that pipe once that's empty we'll hit it with the hose pipe give it a good rinse out scrape the Krausen ring from the top of the tank and then put some caustic in there and recirculate that for 15 minutes half an hour rinse again and then fill it up with persid sanitizer 15 minutes half an hour through the spray ball get every single surface cleaned and whilst I'm doing that as well I'll remove all the fittings from the tank take them over to the sink manually clean them and then put them back on so they get hit with the sanitizer and then we're ready to put the beer in the tank yes I do love a good brew day you know so today is the vacant gesture tomorrow will be another batch of the vacant gesture and then the day after that if I can remember what day it will be Tuesday when Thursday I'm gonna have a different beer for that tank so I'm thinking IPA use up some of these hops that I've got before they start to get old and we'll do a really hop forward IPA with everything in the back end, I think. Don't hold me to it, that's the plan.
So that's another day in the bag. We've got the brew day complete, the vacant in the tank, the oil kettle, and I can remember, cleaned. Stu's just taking the last few casks off the uh, cask wash. So all the casks that we've got now have been cleaned, ready for acid. Uh, all the tanks are empty. We've just got to empty the last bit of dregs out of the stout tank. And I also got a corny keg of, uh, of the stout as well to take home. The stout come out at 4%. There's the cheeky little corny over there, ready to go home on the, uh, on the home bar. <laughs> and uh, before we go home, because we've got these birthday beers from Tiny Rebel that I showed you yesterday, I thought we'd try one on camera. This is the Tiny Rebel and Dea. I've never heard of Dea before. This is their New England IPA 6.8% ABV. Uh, seven years and seven beers mean seven new cans. That's Tiny Rebel's gumph on the back. Don't tell you what's in it as far as I can see, but New England IPA. Probably going to be happy as free. Just show you a few uh, day bro from uh, Chunkham, Shelton. Shows you a few pictures of hops on the shelf on the picture. And it says cryo hops as well on the side. The frozen hops. Well, it's, what they do is uh, they use CO2 to remove the aroma compounds. From the hops. That's not as we know as that is. Well, you might get a bit of it. There's the milk. Look at that. I made mine milk as well. If we get a bit of, bit of the yeast, the cloudiness. It was crystal clear down the bottom, and now you can see all of that, all that milk just blending into the glass. Well, you probably could have done if I'd have done a better job. Of operating the autofocus. Looks pretty cool actually. Maybe if I put my hand behind it, you get a better shot. Anyway, jeez. Oh, it smells tropical. That's gorgeous. You get a real hit of citra off of that and mosaic. That isn't too dissimilar to their own Club Tropicana, I don't think. It's not, is it? I think it's better than. I think it's better because it's got a bit more bitterness to it. Probably good ABV, I think. Yeah. So the hops on the shelf probably aren't relevant. They've got Jester on there, mm. and something that says Fragile, and they've got some fruit, apple. I don't think Jester's in this. I reckon it's just a, just the can design. Somebody will know, for sure. Anyway, it's friggin' amazing. That's uh, one of the best ones I've had from Tiny Rebel. Sometimes these breweries do birthday beers and they let themselves down a little bit. That one's really good. That is really good. There you go, Tiny Rebel and Daya. New England IPA. Right, we've washed down. Uh, just got to rinse out the caustic tank and then we're ready to go home. Uh, another brew on tomorrow. So we'll see you for that. To the sound. Break up, break down 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 to the sound. To the sound of calamity.